Okay, our first presenter tonight is Alachua County resident, Gainesville lover, city commissioner, husband and father, and teacher, Lauren Poe. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Uh, we are Gainesville. We are a town of creativity, collaboration, debate, and dissent. The path forward for Gainesville's biking community is filled with great promise, a measured apprehension, and most certainly, enormous passion. For many in our community, this <laughs> is the image that comes to mind when we mention the term cyclist. It's the spandex warrior, like Vincenzo Nibli here, the latest winner of the Tour de France. I know TJ Van Garden will be having his year on the podium very soon. Or perhaps it's this guy, the tragically hip 20-something that is much cooler than you because he cannot be bothered to have more than one gear on his bicycle. I tried to dress a little like him tonight. <laughs> but in reality, this is more the traditional bicyclist. It is the family out for a weeknight ride. It is a dash of adventure mixed with a healthy dose of fellowship. It is where we go and how we get there, and it's an everyday occurrence. Or maybe it's the battalion of youngsters, like in this picture, making their way to school, minds sharp and bodies strong after their morning ride. Or at least, this is how we used to get to school when I grew up. And more likely, for many Gainesville residents, it is their way to work. It is the pre-dawn, neon vested, day laborer mounting his sole mode of transportation en route to their minimum wage job. Like more than 25 percent of Gainesville workers in East Gainesville. And for many the bike path ends here. Barriers exist in our community whether they be distance, lack of connectivity, dangerous roads or unaware motorists. The path to bike mobility is at times a dead-end street. The bike path can even have fatal consequences, like the 61 pedestrians and 32 cyclists killed by motorists in Alachua County between 2003 and 2012. Families have been forever changed and lives lost. But we can build a better path. The passion of our community will demand it. We can create protected bike lanes and priority road markings for cyclists, bike boxes, traffic enforcement, and better roadway design through engineering. The bike path forward actually looks quite bright. We can teach each other to share, to share the joys and the benefits of cycling and biking, and to actually share the bikes themselves. This is a bike share program from Capital Bike Share in Washington, D.C. Uh, we have investigated this in Gainesville, and I will be bringing back a proposal in the coming year to try to roll one out. We can also make bike parking easy, accessible, and plentiful. We can make it so convenient and so enjoyable to choose to ride, we'll leave the car at home charging in the garage. And, of course, we can't forget to bring the fun. We can build a premium network of on- and off-road facilities that will not only benefit our own residents, but will draw people from around our region, around our country, and really from around the world. But it's not just about transport, safety, or fun. Cycling is green in so many ways. Bike parking brings in more revenue to businesses than car parking. Bikers are more likely to stop and spend. By driving 20% less, Portlanders have contributed an estimated $800 million to their local economy before they invested in cycling infrastructure. 
We can encourage, educate, and promote our local businesses through events like bike takeovers, bike discount days, and a promotion of bike-friendly business designations, like tonight, for example. We can and should dedicate ourselves to hosting a periodic cyclovia. This is an image of the original cyclovia in Bogota, Colombia. Uh, where we take over a major roadway like University Avenue, shut it down for an entire afternoon, and let families come out and play, have activities for the kids, have vendors out on the streets, people that have the storefronts there to bring their businesses out, and to bring roads back to what they used to be, which was a shared public community asset. But let's face it, beyond recreational, transportational, and economical reasons for, greater cycling, for a greater cycling culture in Gainesville, Cycling is just plain smart. Bike infrastructure is cheaper to build and maintain. It reduces auto congestion and promotes a healthier community. And biking is sexy. <laughs> Bikers make better lovers. <laughs> biking remains both eternally romantic and boringly pragmatic. So while biking is not guaranteed to save the world, I'm pretty sure it will. Think about our future. What do we want it to look like? What does my little friend Issa here deserve? As Ron Cunningham commented on his picture that he took here, quote, how many potholes could have been filled with the money spent on this overpass? It turns out, I don't care. <laughs> Copyright Ron Cunningham, 2014. So what will it take to realize our aspirations? It must start with community collaboration pushing political will. Take London Mayor Boris Johnson here, who used his legs to change the cycling culture in his city. Uh, we have an election in a few weeks. What do you expect from your elected leaders? You need to make your voice heard at the ballot box. So it is a dawn of the bike path in Gainesville. We must organize, collaborate, harness our creative passions, and work towards becoming a premier cycling city. Our success will be measured by the health happiness and economic success of our future generations like my little friend Isa. Thank you very much. <laughs>